from the Wicked Explorers tonight. We're doing our first comedy show here at the Hooli House. It's the stage behind me. We're all set up, we're ready to go. It should be a good night. I do uh, some stand-up myself. We have some funny, funny comics on there. It's a great venue here. This is upstairs of Hennessy's, 25 Union Street, every other Tuesday. You should check this place out, definitely. We do one of our shows, and stay tuned. It's gonna be a night of laughs, funnies, and all that good stuff. All right, this is the list we have signed up so far. Put myself to seven other comics. Cool little lounge area. The seats really can't see right now. We don't get the lights all the way on. But uh, some couches right there, some pop stools. You know, can chill, relax, enjoy. It's gonna be a great time. Galaxy.com blog and Wicked Explorers YouTube page. North Shore Zone RTA T4. It's testing us. The first night here at the Hooli House. Thank you guys for coming. Shava. Hopefully this picks up over time. We'll see. It's a beautiful day out today. Maybe everyone out there is uh, at the beach or something like that, or hanging out, walking down Union Street. You could open the windows and stuff here too. Awesome. How's everyone doing tonight? It's getting a little crazy. I don't know what that was. Who got wireless mic isn't the best idea for a comedy show, right? You should always go for the standby uh, the wired mic. But uh, you guys loving the set? Degree weather today? I mean, isn't it awesome? Global warming, huh? I'm digging global warming. In fact, I'm 110% for global warming. I think it's awesome. I go when you have 70 degree days in February, nothing beats that. I actually sometimes leave my car on at night, overnight, just to contribute to the ozone layer. Um, sometimes weeks, I just leave it running for hours and hours and see what happens. And, you know, I wouldn't be that guy. People say, it's not always warm, so you can maybe get snow, lots of snow in July. And I say, hey, that's a plus. I go, hey, for the snow shovel company, it's just gonna be more money for them, you know? For the kids in school, just more snow days for them. So I don't understand why global warming is such a bad thing. You know, and I can't, I don't understand like, you know, oh, the ice caps are gonna melt. Oh, really? Well, I guess that house I bought in Worcester is gonna have oceanfront property in a few years too. So you just wait and see, you know, so both buy out North Adams and the, uh, the Berkshires. You got oceanfront property in 20 years. And if you, uh, you go to the top of the Pru, you'd be like right against the waterline. It'd be like, you pop your boat up there and everything, it'd be nice. Be cool. But I can't imagine nowadays that pollution is any worse than it was like 200 years ago. I mean, we've all seen Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right? I mean, they zoomed out and it was in London or wherever out in that European type of shitty, sh uh, shitty, shitty city they were at. And those big giant chimneys, there's black smoke going everywhere. I mean, that's pretty bad. I mean, you don't look out the window and see a big smog. We're not like in Hong Kong where like, you look out the window and you're like, I can't see my neighbor. I don't even know what the weather is outside. Is it smog or is it just a foggy day? And at least like nowadays, like, you know, the, the pollution was so bad, it caused grandparents to sleep with each other in the same room, in a house in the living room. You know what I mean? Like, what the hell is that all about? What kind of, how bad off are you that you're just laying in the bed? You come home and it's grandma, grandpa times two sitting there in a bed. You know, and next to the kitchen, where you're trying to cook, and they're in their pajamas, and you know, old people smell and shit, and you're just trying to get there, you're trying to prepare, you're just trying to have an appetite, you know, dad comes home, next thing you know, the family's living there, sleeping in the living room. It's like a big giant swingers club of old people. And I know a thing or two about swingers clubs, I can tell you that much. No, funny story, so I like to contribute to the ozone uh, issue. I, um, I used to drive a Hummer, and got a whopping nine miles per gallon, which is awesome. And uh, I didn't mind that so much. I just thought it was just, you know, it, it's the type of car that you could pull your house off a foundation if you really wanted to. You know, in some, some situations you might want to do that, you know, some equipment. Um, but uh, it, it, it's always hard to find a parking spot for these Hummers, you know. But you, always, you ever go to these parking lots and you see a thousand parking spots for these tiny little electric cars? And you think to yourself, it's like, Who's driving these little electric cars? I don't ever see anyone out there. These parking spots are always empty. So, you know, sometimes you just gotta park in it illegally and see what happens, you know? Especially in Cambridge. If you're in Cambridge, everyone has those things out there. It's like, 
you get a pock where you get a pock, you know? So, um, so one day I was going to church and uh, I was driving my Hummer and I did not uh, have a, a parking spot big enough in the, in the church. So I just parked in one of those electrical, electric uh, parking spots. So I get out and there's a note on my windshield that says, asshole. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's nice. I didn't know my priest drove an electric car and I took his spot, so I felt really bad about that. Uh, I'm from the North Shore, in case you guys are wondering, uh, Revere to be exact. The North Shore of Boston is, uh, I like to call it Boston's top hat. We're one of the few cities in the uh, world that has our own wardrobe. It's called the Revere Tuxedo, if you don't know. It's a Adidas jumpsuit <laughs> with a white t-shirt underneath it. If you travel a little south to East Boston, you have the East Boston tuxedo, and all you gotta do is take the Adidas jumpsuit jacket off. If you go to a wedding up in the North Shore, I guarantee you you'll be able to see at least one Adidas jumpsuit at any given time. In fact, you come to my house on every weekend, I'm probably walking around. Um, it's a good thing we're doing comedy tonight, we're not doing trivia. We have uh, trivia people here, anyone love the trivia here? It's nothing weird than the crowd. It's nothing weird than people that go to trivia religiously every Tuesday, you know? They, and they sit there, and they get their teams, and they get their tables, and they get the spots where they go, you know? And they have those, you know, creative team names, like, I have a dick in my mouth. So every time the trivia guy goes, I got a dick in my mouth, has 15 points. And you look at them, and they just laugh to themselves. Hey, he, he, we're so funny. You know, and they're very, very like competitive with each other as well. You know, they like, you know, make sure no one's cheating. You know, they get really, really upset. You know, families are torn at the table at the local Irish pub in the North Shore during trivia night because Sally says that Clinton was the 46th president of 46th, well, blah, and the other one says Ronald Reagan was. And the next thing you know, it, you know, poor Susie is uh, put out on the uh, curb and mom kicked her out because of that. Trivia disputes. You've seen it happen all the time. And nothing's worse more than the trivia partaker, if you will, than the trivia host. And these are people of unique personalities. Two hours a week they go to a bar and they do trivia. And they talk in this weird radio person fake voice. And you think they do that voice outside of trivia? Like you think they go to Dunkin' Donuts in the morning and be like, I will have a medium hazelnut. Extra sugar, please. You know? Well, they're on the phone off their bank. He goes, yes, I would like to know what this charge for $15 is on my account. Or during sex. Yes, I really like it when you do it that way to me, baby. Ooh. Oh, yes. Seen this thing on the, on, the, on the Facebook today, the Facebook, for uh, puppies. My lovely fiance actually sent this to me. There's puppies. They're giving out puppies. Well, they're not giving out puppies, but they have a puppy um, surplus here in the North Shore. And puppies are one of those things in the world that you look at and it's like, how can you get mad at puppies? You know, how can anyone have anger towards something as sweet and innocent as the puppy? Trust me, there is. If you click on this link, you get to see a bunch of angry people in the world saying how puppies should die, how there's too much puppies. One lady actually says, enough puppies in Massachusetts. We can't take any more of these sheltered puppies. Like they're, you know, like they're, they're tapping into our government resources. You know what I mean? I don't understand. You know, like, like, it's like certain things in this world you just can't get mad at. Puppies is one of them. Candy, who gets mad at candy? No one, dentists maybe. They give cavities, you know? Sex, how can you get mad at sex? Except for the fact that since Craigslist came online, the price of sex has doubled. It's cost me a fortune. Damn Craigslist. All right, everyone, well, thank you for coming today. We have a lot of funny comics here. So we get the show started. Up next, or up first, I should say, Augustine Reyes, everyone. Let's keep it going for a minute. Thank you. So I'm here at the Hooli House. It's the stage behind me. We're all set up. We're ready to go. It should be a good night. I do uh, some.
to Wicked Explorers of Audi 84 and Susie J is brought to you by thepacky.com. Check out thepacky.com.